like yeah. before it was like when did you start calling me dad first of all like <laughs> what happened to the dy like it's daddy <laughs> Like you know what I'm saying, like what so, to the <laughs> bro. It'll hurt your feelings if if it happens, because some I, people I do it their whole life. But like the first day it happened, like that, that who's that? I don't even know who that is. Are you talking not to me? You, not when you Are call you your talking? wife her name or or her, like like yes. no 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 I'm Gabe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like what is exactly. my name? Exactly. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. The Juxtaposition Podcast. Welcome to episode 78 of the Juxtaposition Podcast, a.k.a. the Extraordinary yeah. Nobodies, a.k.a. the Starting yeah. Five, a.k.a. the Five Heartbeats, a.k.a. the Four Hubbies in the Possible, a.k.a. the Four Hubbies in the... Oh, I said that already. A.k.a. the Positivity Podcast. <laughs> She's rusty. There we go. You be rusty. <laughs> Woo! I, I just put some shots up in the gym. I felt like I was ready for the game, and I came out and I missed my first layup. <laughs> um, it's good to be back. How are y'all feeling, fellas? It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been good. a minute. It feels good. It feels good to see y'all, man. I'm looking at Zoe just shaking his head. Are you going to say something? Zoe just like, nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling great, man. Feeling great. So, first and foremost, uh, apologies to to the Justice League. We kind of just fell the face of the earth without letting nobody know what's going on. We kind of just didn't. Um, there was no updates on Instagram. There were no updates uh, audio-wise, but... This episode will serve as to just catch you up as to how things are going for us. Uh, yeah. A lot of big things are happening. If you follow us individually, then you probably know what's going on. But otherwise, um, you know, Cleveland got an early gift. Talk to us about, about the gift that you got a little early that kind of made, made it so that we put this on the back burner and put the focus on, for on your sure. gift. For sure. So, yeah, uh, as you said, we kind of ended things a bit abruptly because uh, my daughter decided that she was ready to come into this earth five weeks early. (laughs) Yeah, man. So, yeah, disruption at its finest. So she... (laughs) She was like, "Now nah, I'm I'm ready to come out of here." So, uh, five, she came five weeks early. Um, you know, born at 35, 35 weeks old, uh, gestational weeks old, and um, yeah, man, it's been it's been fun ever since. Fun ever since. I told Cleveland that he looks he looks very good for somebody that has not been getting any rest. So, how has <laughs> it been? I know that you this not your this not your first rodeo. You know, this is your second yeah. daughter, uh, mm-hmm. the first in a while. Your first mm-hmm. is uh, about to be a professor in college soon. Um, yeah, <laughs> but well, she's about to at least be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is it like being uh, a brand new dad? Um, mm-hmm. Again, you know, more resources, wiser. You know, you're with your wife. Like, talk to me mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. So, uh, as you kind of alluded to already, my my situations were different. My I have a, a daughter that's now 15 years old that was born two days before I graduated college. So when she was born, it was, you know, I was fresh out of, you know, having futons for furniture. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like eating McDonald's dollar menu and, and you know, I didn't have a great vehicle, really didn't have great income. Uh, so it was completely different. I was really growing up as I was raising her. Mm-hmm. Um, now, a uh, situation is different. Um, I'm married. Uh, my wife and I both are established, uh, better established financially. Um, you know, I'm older, I have more experience and, and thankful to my oldest daughter for allowing me to gain that experience. So two completely different, different situations that each one of them were born into. But what's the same though, is that even at a young age, when my first daughter was born, I was always very active, very involved. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, making sure I was there, being supportive. And that's, same, that's consistent um, even now. None of that changes. It's just, you know, better resources at this point, which is a blessing. That's what's up. And on the heels of that, because I want to know more, because I have questions. The questions mm-hmm. I have is because something I haven't released to the pod is the fact that I, too, am having a daughter uh, hey. very soon. Hey. Very soon. Yeah, the man. air horns on that. <laughs> Hit the, the air, air horns, horns for the girl dad. Um, yeah, we've girl known for a while. 
we have, we've known Absolutely. for a while as as far back as february um and if you're hearing mm-hmm. this then we're in october i mean we're in august uh our our baby is due um mid october it's been like this whirlwind like i can't explain it just looking at tip every day she's bigger it's just like you know something that i find tremendously like valuable and like crazy is she responds to my voice meaning when i'm not in the room and she's with tiff obviously she's with tiff but i'll come into a space and i begin to talk to tiff she starts to kick around and then tiff is mm-hmm. like you know she 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 tells me that all the time like she responds when tiff is like mm-hmm. i want to make her move she'll say var come here like you know talk to her and then she starts doing shit. And i'm just like how is that possible like that's crazy is crazy it's a like, great feeling it's it's like uh like being removed from it like because i'm in the room here but i'm with her at you know every waking moment um mm-hmm. just thinking about that experience is like wow bro like how is how can how can, how can that connection be so so ha- so so uh so crazy so so soon so it's it's wild it's wild and you know she is she is part of you and they recognize your voice while they're still in the womb and what's really going to get you is when they're born and you say mm-hmm. their name and their eyes start to look for for the voice mm-hmm. that they've recognized even before they got there that is like that's the part that just makes it real real my my first daughter same deal like used to talk to her every day when she was in the womb she was born i said her name she was looking around same thing mm. with uh with my most recent daughter said her name she stopped crying started looking like i know that i know that voice ah. i know that voice and that's how you know it's real bro it's like okay all right we in it now Man. I, I agree i feel like it's, it's crazy. important i feel like that's important like with my first daughter i didn't really i thought it was a little weird talk to the stomach like kind of you know strange and stuff like that you see on tv so i didn't i wasn't really i mean also i was 25 so i was still like a little young-minded with that but with my second i didn't that's the homie like (laughs) even to this day (laughs) right she came out like yo that's my dude right there like yeah knowing what it is so i that's that it is a crazy thing though because you like especially Mm -hmm. if you see the first of all the first time i ever seen the the stomach move i'm like yo if it's that like alien pop out this morning. <laughs> it's like, I'm out of here. I didn't. I didn't know. Maybe it, it probably was two years ago, but I saw like a video and I saw like, you know, the imprint like from now. Tiff isn't there yet, like, but I can see her belly move and I can see like little mm-hmm. parts move. Mm-hmm. Also, like Tiff knows where she is, so there'd be like this little hard thing. And it's just like, mm-hmm. what part of her body is that? Is it like her foot? Is, is it an elbow? Is it a knee? Yeah, it's, it's like, what we went is to, uh, something else that like, uh, I, I didn't know is that after a certain point, they stopped giving you ultrasounds. Um, so you don't get a chance to see the baby as often. We got spoiled. The first, you know, mm-hmm. four or five appointments we were seeing her. Uh, so we wanted to see her last time. And she was in there holding her foot, bro. Like, what are, like, what are you doing? She's, yeah. she's in there holding her foot like the first one of the first time she was in there like uh she gave the thumbs up like she was like mm-hmm. her head was down and she was i was like yeah she she gonna be she she know what time it is like she knows exactly what's going on it's an amazing experience man like to know that there's like even just saying it out loud like there's a person inside of your significant other like right. there's a person inside of her that's just crazy like when you think about it and like I rem- the first time that I and felt there was a person inside of her to create that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I, I mean. Was, yeah. I was here before See, you. I, I, was, I was full circle. <laughs> I mean, thank me. Yeah, man. The first time I heard, the first time I felt uh my youngest daughter move, it was actually on my birthday. Like oh. that I felt like physically felt and saw like the stomach move mm. and felt it. I was talking to her and then I had my stomach and I just felt like a boom, boom, boom. And the little Ooh. arm or whatever it was, like poke, poke my hand. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is crazy. That's it's so amazing. crazy. Yo. And that's the thing, man. Women are amazing because to go through all that they have to go through during a pregnancy is right. amazing, wow. bro. It's amazing. And we went out on, um, we went to went outside on Saturday and Tiff is, she's so beautiful. Like you can't even like, if you like on a zoom call you can't tell she's pregnant like at all so somebody that we didn't know was at the table and she's big 
But she's like, hold on, you're pregnant? <laughs> like, like stand up? And she's like, what the fuck? Like, so, you know, that's also trippy. Like, you know, if we, we work in a virtual environment, so if she didn't tell her team that she was pregnant, they would they wouldn't know whatsoever. That's mm-hmm. crazy. So um, but now we're going to shift. If we haven't figured it out, this episode is going to be about updates. Clearly, we just gave y'all the updates. But you know, it's four girl dads in the possible now. Like that's what that's what life is. That's that's what yeah. it's about. Like yeah. a lot of dad content. A whole lot of like you know. Even on this call now, we have uh, Cleveland who has had a daughter, oh seven. Uh, mm-hmm. Alonzo who just had uh, his daughter just turned ten. How old is yep, the youngest? Six. Six, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, very new to this game. <laughs> and the person who has the, the oldest kid also just had a newborn. So this is wide spectrum of like dad experience, but the commonality is that it's all girls. All so let's girls. talk about being a girl dad. So I want to start with you and talk about like how has being a girl dad changed you? You've now I mean let me set it up for you. You've always been a guy that's had uh friends that were women. Um you never were a guy that kind of like treated women any kind of way. So I know that like being a girl dad didn't change your perception of how women are, but like, how did it change you as a person? Well, I would say I had a, I had a, an example before me, Mr. Pulpit Poppy. So mm-hmm. I, I was able to watch him. He was the first girl dad in the crew, uh, in our immediate crew, not like, right, you know what I mean? right. so, um, and that's my goddaughter. So I was able to see and watch, you know, that kind of play out a little bit. And then it, more so even when he was a, a, a girl dad by himself, which that's, you know, a whole nother ball, ball game. So I kind of learned from my surroundings and people, but you have to have, I will say I'm definitely way more patient and and God knew what he was doing because I would not be able to be married to a social worker and have boys. <laughs> like somebody losing their job or something. Like I can't, I can't do it. Because like, I know, like I'm like, yo, they like I will lose my mind. Like even with, even hanging with my nephews, like with Bash and Cam, and I love them, and they drive Chris nuts. Right, but I can watch from a distance, like yo, right, they crazy, right. and still go right. home, like they not my kids. You feel me? Right, right. And, right. and even and they drive him crazy. His reactions is probably the same as what I would have, but I just am glad I don't have to. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and, and I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, we can none of us can speak to this, but I would imagine you will probably be way more critical of your boys in terms yeah. of how they're competing. How are they treating people in the world? I would imagine that, like, I know that my daughter will be, you know, she'll be nice and sweet. She won't be a bully. But as a boy, if you have boys, you have to worry about, like, yo, you got to don't be a bully. Like, or also get a stand up for yourself. Like, all these, yeah. like, I would imagine you'll, you'll be way more critical about the little nuances of your son from, mm. you know, from six months on. Okay. But not, nah, see, the thing is this. When you're a parent, like certain things like stand up for yourself all that stuff that it don't really matter that's universal that's across yeah. the board because yeah. Yeah. because you you are the protector like you know you the lion king right so you like right. yo mm-hmm. i got to so i even with amber that's why i had them in martial arts that's why I, like if amber right. come home with something i'm snapping like yo what we let's get car like we going to even school. more not... so probably if you had a girl yeah, like that's when, the thing yeah, that's what i'm about to say yeah. with a boy Put it tomorrow and punch him in the face. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But with a, with a daughter, you like, nah, I'm punching somebody in the face. Way more protective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're like, hold up, time out. Now my baby girl protective. can't come home upset. Like, we're not doing it. Yeah. I would say it changed yeah. me where I have more patience for them. I probably deal with a little right. bit more back talk than I would normally if it was a little boy. Them to me. Mm. Just because they just. And a lot of the reason for me even accepting it is because. I understand where they're getting it from. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know that you who I know who you're a descendant of. A few people <laughs> in my family. You feel me? I already know, like, uh, I just gotta mold it and chill out. I think with yeah. them more so is how they treat each other. And mm. I think one thing I would tell you as being a girl dad that I probably would not have even thought about 
if I was to avoid that, is making sure they self esteem. Yes, like yes, yes, I'm, yes, I'm always major. playing, especially as black women. You know I me, mean? black brown women. Yep, like yep. I'm always, you know, when they was three or and I think Ava was might be two or three, and then Amber was like seven. I'm playing brown skin girl and mm-hmm, while they mm-hmm. brushing their teeth, you know, right. everything mm-hmm. to let them know this is this is who we are. It's look at the vibe is beautiful. Like that's what it mm-hmm. is. So funny I enough, mean, if it's one thing that I know is uh I think I did my I did a paper on this in, in my psychology class. My dad has called my sister pretty girl from the day she was born. Like that was that's her nickname from you know to, from my dad to her. And y'all know my sister. She don't like for confidence at all. Ain't you mm-hmm. can't. There's nothing that you can do to shake. <laughs> there's nothing you can do to shake my sister's confidence. So whatsoever. But me. I, but I, I, I look at the origin of my dad being able to like really instill that. It's like it's, it's not even a, a thought. It's like she knows she's beautiful. She knows she's valued because of the way my dad treats her, and he has from day one. And mm-hmm. you know when you get to the pervasive side of, of society, and you look at like daddy issues and shit people are able to, to to sneak in through that that door of like yep. let me affirm you let me make sure, let me tell you what your father didn't do it what your father didn't say so mm-hmm. yeah that's huge though or you go it's seeking major. it and it was crazy is i mean to be honest with you, all three of our sisters we all got sisters um, right cleveland sister older and me and vars our sisters you know we're young are younger but all of them got personality that's <laughs> all three of them that's got some energy like yeah. you know Mary like she running and shows they act, where she at they act sure. like they got dads yeah like, no nah, that's 100 percent, 100 percent. i think that was the most important thing for me as well one of the most important things for me as well was making sure my daughters know that they're beautiful like i never mm-hmm. wanted my daughters to turn to a man for anything that i could have provided Right. specifically so telling them that they're beautiful is one of the things is like yo you're beautiful don't ever let anybody make you feel otherwise or tell you different like you're beautiful right. but then also for me it made me work harder like financially mm-hmm. because i don't ever want you run into some man like no you need to know that daddy got it or oh. i'm a, or i'm gonna let you know how to get it but you don't gotta run to ronnie bobby ricky and mike for a couple of dollars <laughs> like you issue. know what i'm saying yeah, like <laughs> not for a couple of dollars. They can't give you. They don't. You don't need to go to them for a couple of yeah, dollars. Yeah, you don't do nothing strange for no change. Like, <laughs> ever. Yo, early on, early on uh, in college, y'all know Shayna. Shayna said something to me that was like, "Whoa, this is wild, right?" Because I grew up poor, so I didn't identify with this concept. She was like, her dad told her, "There is nothing a man could ever do for her that he couldn't," and he was like, "He was like nothing." She's like, you know, part of my language. He was like. Can a nigga buy you a house better than I can provide for you? Can a nigga buy another nigga buy you a car? So she was instilling this like strong sense of like my dad gonna figure this out if like mm-hmm. if she don't have to go for a guy to a guy for for anything. And I'm 18, 19, being like, your dad gonna buy you a crib? <laughs> what? My dad don't even have a crib for his goddamn self. Well, let alone <laughs> go buy one for me. But that set this tone to like how black fathers are supposed to take care of their black daughters. You mm-hmm. know, like. That that was like trend. I still remember it to this day. That was fucking sixteen years ago. Yeah, man. Like, and that's and I I say that to my oldest all the time. Like, daddy got it. Like, you don't never gotta go to nobody else. And it's not it's not even about actually the act of being able to. It's just knowing that you have that support in yep. someone helping to figure it out, right? Because not not everybody may be in a position to just say like, here you go, I'm gonna buy you a house. But you can be in a position to tell them like. Here's the credit that you need. Here's the down payment yeah, that you need. Right. Here's how you structure out your, your finance. You can educate them on that. So it's like you if and you can instill that and empower in them that they can do that themselves. Like you don't need a man to be able to and not on some man bashing stuff. Just don't be dependent upon a man coming into your life and you needing them in order to do the things that you want to do in your life. Like, that's what I'm trying to instill in my girls. Not no man bashing. I don't need a man, like, all men are dogs type vibes. But just, yo, you you got it. And anyone else is just going to add to that. Something else that you just mentioned is, like, you know that we'll be in a financial position to provide our daughters with a down payment for a house. 
Absolutely. You know, we like we would we will be in a position to be able to get her a home before she's even able to be before she's a teenager, right? If you want to do real estate, you can put a home that you finance in your daughter's name, like like all these possibilities that I didn't have the op- opportunity to do. You know what I mean? Like I didn't have that, and the possibilities of that is just endless. And to think that like where my daughter will start as compared to where I started, even though I had a great life. It's like it's like this is crazy each generation gets stronger in that area though it's like you know like my parents generation was find that good job keep that good job yep. mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying our generation was go to college then get a higher paying job and then our generation also quickly transitioned into like what's your side yep. hustle as yep. well my daughter was just talking to me the other day my 15 year old about ip about mm-hmm. how she wants to protect her ip I'm like, bro, like what every generation <laughs> is advancing a little bit further. Like, yeah, I want to draw and I want to do graphic art, but I just got to make sure that, like nobody's trying to steal my IP. And I'm like, yo, you're already talking about intellectual property at 15. So like these are things that advance each generation. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Because this generation is also the first generation, as we saw with TikTok. Uh, they won't be Elvis. You know what I mean? They are like, no, Ooh. I made this dance. You know what? Oh, so you don't want to honor the fact that I made this dance and we make this oh, platform? Yeah, We're all up. leaving. We're all leaving. Yeah. All the black creators spearheaded by black black women, black girls. We're like, we leaving TikTok, TikTok until we get our credit. Let's talk about the strength of black girls really quickly. Go ahead, let's do uh, it. So my daughter was born five weeks early and because she was born like right at the cusp of being considered premature, she had to go to the NICU. Now, in the NICU, her first nurse was a black woman, and uh, my daughter was doing really well. I mean, she was breathing on her own. She was moving around. She was very vocal, very active, uh, feeding very well. And uh, the nurse was telling me, she was like, you know, she's not going to be in here long, but, you know, she's a little black girl. So that's kind of how little black girls are. Now, I, I didn't take that to mean anything based upon statistics because i'm like this is a black woman saying that this right, little right. girl is going to be strong <laughs> yeah exactly until i took my my daughter was out of the nicu in less than a week i uh, took my daughter to her first pediatrician appointment and the pediatrician told me that uh young black women babies young black female babies hit their milestones in our the strongest in terms of hitting their milestones and specifically coming out of the NICU faster than any other demographic than any other anybody else so black especially being being a parent of a young black girl that made me super proud because I'm like okay like my baby's already strong like Mm -hmm. and it just it, it just instills so much pride in me because I'm like yo like she's already exceptional like she's already better than people who were born even before her. Not, I don't want to say better. She's already hitting milestones faster than other babies that were born at the same time or before her in her weight class. Like she's the Floyd Mayweather of her weight class for real. So like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I was super proud and happy to hear that, man. But it makes you, yeah. it makes you really value what you have for sure. And, and, I'm gonna say and the reason why, I, I, the reason why I know that where he was going is because you and I were having a conversation about something else and then i told i was talking to my sister and she told me that exact stat and i think mm-hmm. i was running it by cleveland he was like oh nah that's official and i was like yeah. you know this shit too i'm like who else knows that little black girls do the best in the NICU in terms of being able to be ready for the world that blew my that's mind crazy. son it's yeah, crazy I, I didn't know that i will tell you this the one thing that Cle- cleveland and i have in common is that Amber was born a month early? Because remember, Var, she was supposed to be born on your birthday on, on September fourth. She was born August second, and she was four pounds and some change, around the same weight as um, Cleveland's daughter. But she was not in the NICU and just was. They was like, "Oh, she's straight. Like <laughs> she's just ready to roll. She's just small. Like y'all good." And that's that's I what like, I mean. What? Like, but this is the stuff that. For me, I'm, 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 I'm go- I mean, I'm going to be a girl dad, and you know, whenever she decides to, to arrive, but like, you don't know. Like, these are 
dad milestones. This is information that you're sharing. Like I told the guys before we started recording, I went to Target yesterday. I was just picking up, you know, baby clothes for her. I'm just like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. It's, it's I'm about to really have a real. daughter, son. It's oh, about to go God. down. It's it about is. to go down. And yo, it they is. have you. And think about being a girl dad too. And I, I have nothing else to compare it to. But I just feel like with their fathers, it's just like from the I moment they born, they already know. They already know how to work daddy. Like they already know. Like from the moment they're born, man, it's a be- it's so beautiful, man. And and just seeing them grow, man. My all right, so my daughter was born at four pounds, one ounce. So she was mm-hmm. small, small. But she was and lengthwise, she wasn't she was right where she needed to be. She was 17 and a half inches long. Um, so she was pretty long to be at 35 weeks gest- uh, gestation, but uh, but she was four pounds, one ounce. She's now already she's about to be eight pounds. She was seven and a half pounds uh, last week at her last week appointment. And for her two month appointment, I'm sure she's going to be eight pounds, man. So she's just catching up and just seeing like how much they awaken and mm. are enlightened over the over the weeks. It's like they looking at you at first. And you know they looking at you, but sometimes you wonder, like, do you really know that you're looking at me? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You, you don't got no neck control. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's you know, like, out here, out here, out here, out here, like, 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 like Mayweather for real. Like, you ever see the boxes when they put the uh, the towel on their head and they just like doing the neck <laughs> movement? Yeah, I yeah. But then it's like, then they just they they come alive, they come awake, and. Man, now my daughter, she's looking at me right in my eyes. She's laughing. She's smiling. And all of it happens over a very short period of time, man. It's it's beautiful. It it makes it makes the other side of it worth it, which we need to talk about as well. The <laughs> but I don't want to jump there yeah. if we're not ready. Bro, <laughs> you don't get no sleep. You oh. uh, well, no sleep is part of it but you also ain't getting no buns for at least six weeks <laughs> you are not being physically intimate with your wife for at least six weeks bro at so least. you're tired oh, at no least fix, six weeks no fix was like <laughs> at least um, zoe followed that rule wait either he ain't follow it or no, he I or he wait longer it. i think fo- longer it longer yes, yes. i think it got extended it's at least six weeks bro extra time and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the tough was, part. Well, well, that's another thing. My wife has C section, so it's eight automatically. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, C yeah, yeah. is different. So it's a whole nother ball game. So you're talking eight to ten. So you're a little also, six. Before <laughs> you're a little six. Before we get too far, also shout out to uh, James with his daughter, his his daughter Chloe. as well. Because Chloe. because she's a she got a chance. She came to, to California with James and like she's a whole human, bro. Like, yeah. Like she's a whole person. Her personality. She was chilling, and that happened so quick. I see her Instagram. She's climbing stairs now, and it's like, yo, he just had her in October. The other day, yeah. bro. Yo, listen, and that's, he had, that's wild. He had over here, Chloe is the only child. I want to give her a shout out. She's the only kid I ever seen in my life that actually ate a lemon piece and didn't budge, yo. Mm. Like, she did, like, you know, it's like they all got the videos. Yeah. Ah, they she was like, like, I was like, no. <laughs> kept it, kept it pushing. Hey, I know, he was like, yo, I never gave her one before. I'm like, yo, it ain't even phase her. Yo. <laughs> so was, nah, yo, and it's also funny because, um, I don't know what part just had to play in, in, in uh, in Chloe's creation because James had that child, she by looks just like James. It's <laughs> so wild. Tiff, Tiff sees pictures <laughs> of Chloe, and she's like, "If our daughter looks just like you, and she already loves you, and, and, and right now, like, what am I going to do? I'm going to feel lonely. What am, I, like, what, it, what am I going to do? I'm like, look, she already will be brown, so that's going to be the homie. That's hilarious, y'all. Yeah, she definitely. I'm. I feel bad for Jess, man. She got at least Jess got the cat." They got the cat now. Because <laughs> Cleo got nothing to do with her. Shout out to James and Jess, man. But clearly you were getting to the, you know, the part. Let's let's shift gears a bit. Never mind. I, I, I want to get asked. I want to get you the chance to ask, answer the question, Cleveland, about what has being a girl dad taught you? You know, between last time 
and this song? How has it changed you? I had a large so gap. I. So I, I and I had a. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of experiences with my 15 year old daughter, some of which uh, I hope to never have with um, <laughs> with my youngest daughter, honestly. Like, we. So, like I said before, like I grew up with, I really feel like I grew up with my 15 year old daughter. I was 22 when she was born and I was fresh out of college and it was like, you know, everything was new. Uh, I think I've shared this on the show before, of course y'all know, but there was a period of time where it was just her and I, Mm -hmm. and man, I just, I had to, I had to just figure it out. Like, you know what I mean? I just had to figure things out. I had to figure out, you know, why little girls, uh, personalities shift and change around like nine years old. And it's like, Mm what happened like before it was like when did you start calling me dad first of all like what happened to the dy like it's daddy <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like what so, to the DY? <laughs> bro it don't hurt your feelings if if it happens because some I, people I do it their whole life but like the first day it happened like that dad who's that i don't even know who that is are you talking to me when you call your wife her name or or her like like no no no, i'm babe (laughs) what are you talking about like what is that my name exactly yo so i think being able to experience all of that um it taught me a ton man it taught me a ton and honestly i think one thing that i've learned and like we already mentioned being a girl dad being a protector being a provider um also i think what also important is being present as much as possible and i don't literally listen none of us are deadbeats i'm not talking about just being there i'm literally saying being present as they're speaking to me talking back asking follow-up questions i think that's one thing that i am intentionally doing more of now with my 15 year old daughter and that i want to do be more present during my uh my youngest daughter's daughter's life as well because to me that's so important you know as they're talking just listening to them understanding them guiding them like knowing that they have your undivided attention and i just want to do better in that like you know going going forward with both of my daughters but and that's the thing i i'm not not that i'm kicking myself for what i did because i think for for me to for my daughter to be where she is and who she is at this age at 15 years oh, old bro, is still an you, accomplishment you did pause so we gotta give give flowers to this guy for a second because ain't no way in hell you're going to downplay anything that you did for your first daughter you did an amazing job like dolo Thanks, trauma moving adjustments yeah, uh protecting her peace keeping the family involved bro is, what yeah, like you was extra the legality of it all nah bro no there's i don't think Thanks, you could have been a better father to your first i just think Thanks, you were man. learning I... and 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 i think that's why yeah. i think now it's like uh the veteran in the game like you were still good you was great the game's slower now you, you you yeah you know some shit perfect like, analogy. You know what I'm you know? <laughs> yeah. perfect analogy yeah man. it's like yeah it's like now now It's like you get better, man. Like with your like, and I'm sure Zoe, I'm sure you can identify with this. Like the second time around, it's like you know what to expect. The first one is showing you everything that the second one is gonna do. And (laughs) they repeat the same, it's the same thing uh, over and over again. So like now it's like, no, like blame your older sister that ain't fall for that because she gave me the blueprint. So I already know what you're gonna do, I already know what you're gonna try. So so in a so in a sports analogy. So in a sports analogy, it's like you might play Allen Iris in one game and you see like, oh, this could get dangerous because he ain't cross you yeah. over. But the next mm-hmm. game you play like, oh, now I know how you play defense. That's the second kill. Exactly. I'm <laughs> going to kill you all night. I already back. know. Buckets, buckets, That's buckets. A- and you're like, what did the, what did the same the first time around? Why are you doing yeah, this? The second one definitely exactly. does you in. The second one does you in that. Yeah, and man. your second one, though, is hilarious. And yeah, so, she is. <laughs> so so not only is she funny, but like she'll do something and just smile and just like, yo, my man, get out of here. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, back up off. <laughs> back up off. You already know what it is. Yo, but she's adorable. It's it's she like is, and she knows. And she knows it. I think that's the problem. 
it is. And he, he spoke about manipulation <laughs> early on. People were like, just they got you, bro. They yeah. got you. I don't even know if we can call it manipulation. I think it's more like they, they just, just know your number, bro. Like they know <laughs> where the holes in the armor are. It's not even cheating. It's not even cheating. They just know where the holes uh, in the armor are, and they like, bang. I'm gonna get you every yeah, time. Yeah. You better protect yo, it. I love this dad content, yo. This is this makes me yeah. so happy. Like, cause I'm at the we, nine ten now. Uh, like, yeah, you want to talk about that? I'm at that. The dy gone. <laughs> what happened, bro? Here? It's like they just throw it in the trash at nine years old. Like, what oh. is this extra <laughs> extra syllables? Like, nah, I ain't saying that no more. <laughs> I, yo, I'll like, be nah. feeling a little tight. Like, oh, so we cool like that now? You know me like that? <laughs> <laughs> so, I ain't tell you Yo, you can shorten name. my name. <laughs> on a first name basis, nicknames. Like... <laughs> That's That's funny. Funny. I'll, call, I'll call my mom mommy until she passed. She was mommy forever. Like, forever. It, I'm telling I, you. So that's 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 a thing. But I want to transition because I want to hear from y'all more specifically. We were going in this direction before, but like y'all are fathers already, right? Two time, two time heavyweight champs over there. <laughs> what advice? What advice do you have for me as somebody that's you know about to get in this space and are you know I'm super excited but don't know what the fuck's going on? Like, what would you tell me about what to expect or how to prepare for this type of these moments? One thing I'm going to say, I know that you're already doing, um, and I would just encourage you just to continue to do at the level that you're doing it is do all that you can do to ensure that your wife is healthy. Mm -hmm. And for, for all, for all of the, uh, trimesters during pregnancy and for what they call the fourth trimester during postpartum, like just being very present being very observant of changes in behavior, uh, changes in health, being an advocate and knowing as much as you can going into the hospital, all of that, this second time around, I think that was one of the biggest differences for me, just being more informed about how I could better support my wife. Um, and just little things like, so I tell a bit of my story. So my wife had a headache for a 24 hour period, which is what made us go to the doctors which eventually led to my daughter being born five weeks early because her blood pressure spiked to 221 over 120. That's like seizure and stroke stroke status. Yeah. Yeah. That stroke level. So her blood pressure spiked all the way up. Um, and it came out of nowhere, but because we were so aware of, listen, any major change in your health, we're going to get that checked out by the doctor. You can't go to the doctor enough. If, yeah. if your appetite changes, go to the doctor. If your right. toe is hurting, go to the doctor. Like, just being at, there as much as possible in any change in anything within your wife. If you see it, straight to the doctor. Just explain. You they can say all oh, this. Say so. That's fine. Exactly. <laughs> so I would, I would, I would say that, man. Just, just do that from the from the wife's standpoint. I would say from the to add to that part, that end understand too this for you and all the fellas postpartum does not always mean they don't f with the kid you might be the problem okay so <laughs> exactly sometimes part of it is getting the hell out the way lead a, you might have to leave it like uber eats here go the food i'm out here man exactly no, no, no. drop you postpartum drop. it's you yeah yeah mom <laughs> out i'm out like you gotta yeah you might you and the kids we gonna be in this living room while you do your thing and get your life together <laughs> Cause that yeah. I have, I definitely experienced that, and y'all know I was yeah. the 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 evil guy. And even though I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. I'm like, yo, what, what's wrong? I, I don't and know. Be you happy? Just, like, no. Yeah. Leave. Like, yo, postpartum. You know, and it don't gotta be extreme. It could be on some like like. Envard, this is one of your pet peeves, but it could happen to you. Being that it's your pet peeve, uh, uh, she could look at you and be like, I don't like the way you chew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then it get real. You like, oh, damn. Like, or you, she ain't gonna say it, but it's gonna be like, like what? Like, you looking at you like crazy. So I just want to add that at the end to like, educate that it's not always what you read about. They may like you see them crazy Dateline stories. They try to drown the kid. No, she might roll and try to snuff you. In your- <laughs> You might exactly. want to open one eye open. I'm just saying. If you sleep. As, yeah, exactly. If you sleep. If you sleep, so yeah. Yo, perfect transition. 
Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead I would say with the kid, with as far as the kid, um, it, the advice is I would say two major things: don't rush the growth of your child. Like, don't be. Mm. I would can't wait till she no enjoy every moment because it goes every moment. By, Quick, don't be like damn when she gonna walk when she no because now when they no. run in the wild <laughs> yeah, when she I, gonna walk yeah like I wish I can miss my kids being that small where I can mm -hmm. just hold them and now they mm -hmm. hanging on the ceiling fan and acting crazy <laughs> so you know take it slow don't rush your kids development like enjoy that and right. I will say one thing for me that I am very conscious of is get in tune with, with your site your family cycles. So that way you could break anything that is that you don't anything you don't like or you didn't like growing up. Like I try to make it a point to try not to do certain things that I didn't like. Let's say when I was growing up, you know what I mean. Not that I had this crazy upbringing because if you, my mother hears this, she do listen to my she's like, and what was wrong with you? Like I ain't, ain't nothing wrong. I ain't saying this wrong, but there obviously are certain things that I, I did not, I was not okay with, or I did not like. So I make sure that I will go. To try to do the opposite. It's sometimes hard because genetically my makeup is the same. And sometimes reactions are the first. And you have to take an actual step back and be like, I'm going to make it a point that I didn't like X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to not do that. But still try to teach the valuable lesson that I think what was trying to be taught to me. You know what right. I mean? And yeah. that comes later on when you get older. But even no, I see in that I first see year. To be honest, even I the first year. Like, oh, Stop crying. Why are you like, baby? You have, no, no. Babies yeah, yeah. cry. That's what they're supposed to do. Don't try to yeah. toughen Tiff them I, up. Tiff and I have had, we had a conversation last night about, uh, she said something that was like, just like, you know, like innate. In terms of like, just, yeah. and I was like, maybe we should like analyze that. Like, you know, because she didn't enjoy that part, but then she did it. And she, we both caught it at the same time. I was like, Let's have that conversation about about that. And it was a beautiful conversation, but the fact that we caught it at the same time was like, oh, look at this parenting happening in real time. Like, you know, because mm -hmm. you don't know how you're going to react to something, mm -hmm. right? So in Cleveland, I want you to get back to the point. But uh, funny thing is, I'm sure all moms do this, but like this is the first time I've been around a pregnant woman all 24-7. Whenever uh, the baby is like not kicking, <laughs> they'll be like, she yeah. like, she like poker. Yeah, and oh, she'll like do sure things, something. and I'm like, right. So I'm like, you're gonna be a helicopter mom. I promise you. She's gonna be as soon as she starts to walk, you're gonna be on her head. Like, yeah. where you going? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm like, yo, your motherhood started already. Like, I see it. Like, I oh. see it, and it's amazing, but it's funny as hell. Like to see it yeah, man. manifest, and like, she loves that girl so much. Like, it's like. I come in the room, she having a conversation, she's rubbing her. And it's just like, number one, I feel like a little jealous, like I ain't there because I'm working to doing something, I'm doing something stupid. And then <laughs> it's like, it's, it's beautiful. Like, it's my baby in there. Like, it's just so crazy. So, yeah, so I wanted to hear from you we, about like any sleep stories or lack of sleep stories or, or advice in terms of like how, how much sleep I won't be getting. Well, two things. One, who, if y'all both laying down, and Cleveland actually told me this. He taught me this. Whoever moves first, you lost. The baby crying, you got to get your ass up. If you flinch, if you better play dead like somebody robbing the house, I promise you. Because if you be like, roll up, you got to get up, B. Uh, now I know you up, I'm going to tap you. I'm going to hit you with the gone head. You already up. Boom. So don't move, play dead. That's one. And the second thing... I remember one time, yo, like, if you could get some naps in when you can, like, tr literally power nap. Like, it's like college again. Or, like, being mm. at work uh, at a job where, like, where you be like, I got to go take a nap in my car real quick, a little set my clock and boom, while the kid is asleep. So you got to do that. But I would tell you this. One time, I was so sleep deprived. This is with my first one, with Amber. And I was holding her, you know, I'm, I'm holding her, feeding her. It's got to be, like, 2, 3 in the morning. So it was ungodly right. hour, Right. So I'm holding her and I'm feeding her with, with my eyes closed like this. Mm -hmm. And I heard a thump and then I heard a scream. The baby cried. You and hit I her in like, the head with the bottle? No. 
I dropped the bottle, but it was oh, because she was oh, she was oh, drinking. Was, but I thought I dropped oh. my child. I almost killed myself. I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna... Yo, I heard the thump. It was the bottle hitting the floor, and obviously she was crying because where's the milk, bro? I was mad. Right, I was eating. Right, right. And I heard the scream, and I look. I said, like, I jumped, looked down, like, oh, <laughs> thank God, because I don't know what I would have did. I was like, yo. I would, that's I so know, crazy. Man. That is I so I my kid. crazy. <laughs> I don't. I don't ever want to drop her. I hope I never drop her. Well, if you right. do, because says the it's weird because my wife, who I, y'all know at at one point worked for the child services of the government, she was like, oh well, she got it. They call it in Spanish world like, oh, you gotta get your first boom. And I'm like, I don't like that sound like a boom. What? Why my kid got a boom? And it's like, <laughs> it's like, yo. Yeah, like the only, that's the only the thing. boom I know didn't treat us nice. Exactly, I don't like that. <laughs> exactly. So it's I don't want no boom. flashbacks to that. But it was like I think that's a the thing. They just wait, like yo, they, the kids gotta fall, like it gotta happen. I just didn't want to happen on my eye watch. But the one thing that I did realize, you know, looking things up in terms of about to have a baby, like I know that Tiff is gonna be like soup. She already told me she's like, we're staying in the house for thirty days, and I'm like. Babe, like the baby needs germs. Like the baby needs like the atmosphere in order to like build their immune Some system. Air. I know, yeah, like because I know that she's gonna be like, no, 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 no. I'm like, we go. so I'm gonna have to be the one to like expose her to things in the beginning because Tiff is not fucking with it. I've been looking at like uh, like I said, Jess and Chloe. Chloe be fly as hell. I'm like, am I gonna dress my daughter to just go nowhere? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> You will eventually, but just not at first. No, I, I would imagine like we was looking at little uh, like little onesies. And I'm like, I don't want no want no white onesie. I'm trying to have. I'm trying to see the, the evidence. As, I mean, you are gonna see it, but like white or like a massacre. It's like damn shit. Listen, the white onesies is the baby oh. white tees, yo. It's the fresh <laughs> tees. I believe it. It's, it's the fresh. They tea. walk around the house in those. Yeah, like it's just <laughs> part of life. You gotta get. It. But I will say this, Cleveland. The the reason why you're saying that. I'm going to tell you, and the reason why Chloe's fly fresh and Var Taylor could be fly fresh is because it's their first kid. See, you're speaking from an experience already mm. of, no, we're going to take a nap. They <laughs> Think about how they're they're acting like it's their first kid. And what did we do on the first kid? You, It ain't matter, yo. We was, was going always from dressed one up to the next. Yup. Like, that's the first <laughs> kid. Season. That's about it. That's valid. I, I, can, I yeah, can see that. True. I can, I can see that. But yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't wait. First of all, I just want to tell y'all, I love y'all, man. This has been a beautiful conversation. Just thinking yeah, about love you too, bro. the progression you, bro. that we've all had from when I was seventeen, Zoe was seventeen, Cleveland was eighteen, to building. Y'all knew each other before that, and like here we are. You know, take that age and double it, and mm -hmm. still rocking. Just milestone, and being able to learn from y'all in this way is like. I couldn't ask for better friends, better life. Um, so I kind of just want to put this on a record. Like, like this is some transformative shit. Uh, Cleveland, once again, congratulations, bro. Thank you, man. Though, uh, you know, happy birthday to the oldest. Um, yes, 10-year-old now. <laughs> 10, yeah. bro, 10. And bro, can and, uh, I just congratulations. Wanna... So congratulations to you, man. This is, this is major. Thank you, man. It Major is milestone. Your, your life is over the next couple of years. Well, really, over the last few years, your life has changed and has continued to change. And all great things, man. Yo, so and I want to say that, like, shout out. I was talking to my aunt today, right? Remember Var, the one who uh, we went to in Queens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you know, she lived down south now, right? So I, I talked to her every once in a while and I said, we going she called me today. I was like, oh, we're going to record today. Like, she was like, yeah, I was wondering what happened. I was like, yeah, we, everybody got busy. I said, and you know, I said, you know, Cleveland had a kid, and she was like, "What's up with your other boy? He about he still getting married?" And I was, she was like, "He's still the pops." I was like, "Yeah, he's still on." I said, "His girl is pregnant." She was like, "Oh, okay." So y'all, he been he been busy. Like, <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they say. He been busy. She said, "Is he gonna speed up the wedding?" For? I was like, "Nah, they ain't nobody have time for that." He's like, "How far along?" I was like, "Oh, she, she they, we near." She was like, "Oh, okay, okay." But it's funny because it's like. That yeah, I mean we've been around each other so long. Like my family know, like yeah, I mean that's my aunt. She know you. She know 
everybody and then also just following us on the show like she watches yeah. and listens and it's like yo what's going on i ain't heard nothing like and that's the that's the beautiful thing like it's another progression in our lives and that's why we you know wrapping up i wanted to make sure we had this episode for y'all to know what's happening but also to kind of put on record you know before my daughter was born like how i'm talking about her like you know the excitement like uh i try to record videos as much as i can it's just you know just to quantify those moments of like you know she's almost here but also being very honest with y'all we're going to be off for some time um as you know i have a baby coming cleveland just had one um and we just got life things that we want to make sure that we, we are there for but we will be trying to have some dad content for you on instagram so if you are not following us go ahead to instagram to go to juxtaposition.pod and we, you'll find us there but uh, any last moments, any last words for y'all before we uh, wrap up, probably for the year, you know, um, to the listeners. While y'all having kids and getting married, my baby, uh, We Smoke app will be having a <laughs> official <laughs> launch uh, August Talk 27th about it. up in Adelanto, California. Uh, and uh, we'll be over there and it's supposed to be a huge event. Rick Ross, Buster Rounds, Ludacris, Too Short, Exhibit, Havoc, Soldier Boy, Corrupt, a uh, whole bunch of other people. Um, August what? August 27th. It's a Saturday. And where is it going to be at? Adelanto, California. It's going to be 12,000 Stadium Way. How you spell that? W or what? Adelanto? A-D-E-L-A-N-T-O. So just go to www.cannexs.com. Cannexs.com. That's near LA. Six hours yeah. away. Like damn, it's a, it's a hike for you, but yeah. well, that's gonna be my uh, up and like I, I've already like I said, my I have a ten year old. We just got back from Puerto Rico. We celebrated it in a big way. We mm -hmm. went out there. We had fun. She met some cousins that she never met before that don't speak no English, and they figured it out <laughs> and they had fun. <laughs> oh, that's what's and up. They did they thing? That's yeah, they had a blast. They kids will figure it out. That's the thing. We the ones who impose stupidity on kids. Kids is like ain't worry about it. Yeah, not even <laughs> like, worried about speaking the same language. Nope. Yeah, they figured it out. So that's my new. That's my one thing to coming soon for y'all, and I look forward. We're gonna get at least another two episodes for the years. Out. We got to. We gotta do a holiday. Right. You know, it's that time. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We're gonna have to do something. Any 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 last moments or words for you, Cleveland, before we wrap up? No, nah, man. I just want to just we we touched on this already during the show, but just the importance of being present for where. Wherever you are in your life right now, man, just be present and enjoy it. I think I took some time off of social media, and one thing that I'm realizing now is I'm less worried about what's to come and more engaged in what's now. And I think that's just so important. Yeah, get the bag, do all of that good stuff, but, man, enjoy today. If you don't got the bag today, today is still a day that you can enjoy. So I just want to encourage everybody to do that until the next time we talk to you. Man, we done snuck in a motivational moment. That's crazy. Um, but until next time, um, you know, don't forget about us. We're going to be around. We're going to be around. We're going to be around. But we will be having For sure. major milestones. So check in with us on Instagram. Um, but all right, man. Thank y'all. Hey, we'll check in with y'all next time. Yep. I'm looking for the bag. There's a hole in mine. <laughs> <laughs> Peace.